When you pick a Warhammer army, it's because they're your favorite. And within your favorite, you're gonna have a favorite favorite. And for me and my Gene Stealer cult, that has got to be the Aberrants. The absolute mounds of muscle in the Gene Stealer cult. These guys are pretty much the Terminator equivalents within Gene Stealer cult. And you probably don't leave home without five. 10 is definitely pushing it. 15 is madness. And 20 is like half your army. But I really want to see what it does. So I want to get these guys on the tabletop. The Aberrants were my first love in the Gene Stealer cult. Death Watch Overkill came with four, so I bought extra copies on eBay to get up to 10, trying my best to copy the box art. And then of course, when they got their own multi-part kit, I bought 10 more. And then when the cult got an Aberrant HQ, of course, I needed that too. One funny thing about the Aberrants is that they are the heavy infantry killers. They stomp Marines, Terminators, but they are tiny, standing quite a bit shorter than Space Marines. The Aberrants are my favorite Gene Stealer cult unit, because they're creepy. They're really weird. They're not supposed to be this way. A little bit too much genes to their cult, a little too little human. They spent too long in the oven. They came out a little bit burnt, but I love them for that. These guys have sat in the drawer for far too long. The day of ascension is rapidly approaching. It's time to paint them. I tore my old aberrants off of their bases. I don't know why, but I insisted on pinning every model back then. I used some water to knock off some of the old pigment powders, and then a few of them have broken over the years, so I need to fix them. I found some mining weapons out of the Neophyte hybrid kit and pinned these into place. On one of my aberrants, he has no mining weapons, so in pursuit of WYSIWYG, I decided to fix him. I cut off his whole hand, and then noticed I cut off the wrong hand. So after doing some emergency surgery and fixing it, I glued it into the correct hand. He has so many, it's hard to keep track of. For the sergeant out of the box, he holds the heavy improvised weapon, but I would rather have him with the heavy power weapon. So I clipped off the concrete and sign and found some appropriately large mining tools out of the Goliath Ganger box from Necromunda. Everyone is now clean and tidy and ready for bases. I want to give these guys a little more table presence, so I'm going to stand them up on some cork towers. I stacked up a little cork with super glue and then sanded them down to make convincing cliffs. Then I glued down my aberrants using plenty of super glue. This made quite a bit of mess, so I broke out the old handy vac and then it was time for milliput. I used the putty to soften the transition from flat bases to cork and then covered all the bases in texture paste. I decided on the texture paste instead of sand and glue because it's much thicker and will help hide the corkiness of the cork. Then I picked a few spots on each base to put glue and then sprinkle down some larger grains of sand and pebbles. All these different materials come together to give me interesting bases with a lot of texture. I remember trying really hard on these 10 aberrants, but it's time to leave it behind for my fresh Gene Stealer cult recipe. 20 aberrants and an abominance. The bases took a fair amount of time, but it's the tie to the painting gods, because now I get to paint them. My Gene Stealer cult color recipe is a Zenithal, followed by contrast paint, skeleton horde, and black templar to get the clothing done, and then I pick out the skin and weapons by hand. But these guys are mostly naked, so I feel like if I use the same colors but change the order of operation, I can be a little bit more efficient. I skipped the Zenithal and instead went straight for my base coats, mixing a dark beige and magenta together and spraying this over their bodies, making sure to leave a little bit of the black showing through. And speaking of black, I came back in with my black primer to clean up any of the overspray on the bases, and then I Zenithal the models. This will give me a great head start on the bases and flesh. I gave their bodies a coat of Games Workshop Reichland flesh shade, and for the bases, I made a watery mix of dark blue speed paint and coated all of the bases. I picked out what little clothing they have with skeleton horde contrast paint and then thinned down Black Templar on all of their armor and weapons. I really like using speed paint and contrast paint and washes to do a lot of the work for me, and then I get to do a small amount of highlights and perfecting on top of it. My desk is absolutely covered in a bunch of buff naked dudes, and I have absolutely no problem with this. The Gene Stealer cult aberrants have steadily been growing in power since their inception in Warhammer 40,000 7th edition. They've always been heavy hitters, but they started out a little bit weak at 2 wounds toughness 4. In 8th edition, they went up 1 weapon skill. In 9th edition, they got 1 more wound and 1 more toughness. And now arriving in Warhammer 40,000 10th edition, they got tougher still. Their feel no pain went up to 4 up. And they decrease all oncoming damage by 1. These guys are absolute beasts. And even though they're smaller than Space Marines, their data sheet is much more closely related to the Centurion Warsuit, which is one of my all-time favorite units. These guys are absolute tanks. And my guys are tournament legal, three colors and up. The contrast paint and washes definitely did their job. They're looking pretty good, but now it's time to do the brushwork. And today's sponsor is gonna help with that.
You know Cobalt Keep is the place to go for the best quality wargaming bases and display cases around. They also have the most innovative wet palette on the market. This is a wet palette with all the hobby trimmings you could want. It of course comes with a sponge and pre-cut palette paper, but that only scratches the surface of what this palette has to offer. The dual palette has built-in slots perfect for holding your go-to paints and has some convenient vertical brush storage keeping them up and out of your way. This palette also comes with a huge dry palette, with large cells perfect for mixing up colors and giving you the space for making up an army's worth of washes, mixtures, inks, and special effects. The dry palette also doubles as the lid for the wet palette, keeping your paints safe and your desk clear while you switch your painting styles. And that's not where the innovations stop, the clear plastic lid lets you see your colors while the palette is all closed up. It fits over the wet or dry palette and has a hole and rubber stopper so you can let in more or less air depending on the temperature and humidity of your room, keeping your paint workable for as long as possible. All these parts are interchangeable so you can even link multiple sets together, making the perfect painting sandwich. An absolute tower of paint. You can follow the link in the description below and remember to use our coupon code EOB20 to save 20% on the Cobalt Keep Dual Palette Wet and Dry Palette. I don't have a plan in mind yet for how to tackle the skin, so I'm going to start by experimenting on the boss man. I put a blue wash onto my palette and made up a magenta wash out of some transparent ink and I glazed this onto the flesh. Not everywhere, keeping it in the shadows and joints to make their skin look sickly and inflamed. Like they have far too much muscle under their skin. I glazed the blue over the magenta which blended into a lovely purple color right in the recesses, which is a really nice effect and much better than I could have achieved doing it all by myself with opaque colors. But speaking of opaque colors, I broke out a tan for the abominant skin. He has very prominent muscles that were easy to pick out with a brush, glazing on a few layers of tan highlights and then coming back in with pure white paint and dotting each muscle to give it their brightest highlights. I really like how this looks on the abominant, so I decided to move forward on the boys, giving each of them a round of magenta and blue glazing on the skin. But as I looked over my sea of muscle-bound cultists, these guys are smaller with less pronounced muscles than the abominant, so I don't really want to do all the highlighting by hand. So I decided to throw my tan color into the airbrush and blast this on from above to get these highlights. Now that my tan was done, I tried brushing on the white highlights, but I found I just couldn't get them as smooth and nice as the airbrush. So I put the white ink into my airbrush and did a small blast on their shoulders and heads. The airbrush did a great job of giving me my highlights, but I did lose some shading. So I went back in with my Reichland Flesh shade thinned down to almost nothing. I just wanted to shade in between all their ridiculous muscles. It took some trial and error, but I think I landed on a really fun, sickly skin recipe, which is good because it's not just the aberrants that are a very suns out, guns out unit for the Gene Stealer cult. I got a big old baggie of Gene Stealers. Really excited to get these guys painted up. And I'm really excited to finish these guys because this right here is almost a thousand points in game. Is it a good thousand points? Probably not, but in not too much time, I will be playing with my new and improved Gene Stealers. The only thing left is the weapons. These boys walk around with essentially melee las cannons, so I want them to feel powerful. I started off with the dry brushing of a mid-tone gray to brighten them up, but not too bright. I want to save the bright highlights for the power glow. I thinned down some white paint and glazed this over the little energy windows built into each weapon, splashing this around the handles too, as if the red energy is just spilling out of all the little cracks. Then I put transparent red ink into my airbrush and thinned it down a lot so that it's only depositing the color little by little. I don't want to flood the white. Now I have my glow, but it's lacking saturation. So I took red paint and dry brushed this over the weapon's window. I like when my models are self-evident in what they are. I know Sean will think twice about letting me get too close to his tanks with these molten weapons walking towards him. Now to finish up those bases. I mixed up a cold gray color and dry brushed this over the bases. And then I mixed up some burnt umber pigment powders and mixed it with plenty of water and a drop of flow improver and glazed this randomly over half of every base. I want these bases pretty dark so that the models pop on top of them. After a black base rim, my army has doubled in size. 20 aberrants and an abominant. 815 points of new Steeler cults. Ah, oh, they're so lovely. They've been sitting in a drawer for so long and now finally they're in front of me. I've got 20. And now the question is, do I add 10 more? Because I can max out at 30 in my army. Three squads of 10, probably a terrible idea. Well over half of my army, well over half of my army. Oh, but it would be really fun to run. I wanna see what these guys look like next to the cult. Even though I've been collecting and playing Gene Stealer Cult for a long time, it's all feeling new for me. Like I'm starting a brand new army. 
It's probably because I took 9th edition off of playing 40k, and it's been years since I've painted a cultist. My new scheme is such a departure from my old scheme, the Games Workshop box art scheme. The old blue and grey wasn't much fun to paint, and it was really disheartening that I couldn't do as good a job as the box art. My new scheme is really fun for me to paint, and I'm excited to see how it'll translate onto all my old units as I continue to refresh them. Nick and Sean better look out. The cult is coming out of hibernation. And if you love the Gene Stealer Cult as much as I do, you're going to love this month's Patreon terrain. We have made the Mining Colony terrain and vehicles, utilitarian machines that are more than they appear, designed to ride across the landscape firing stolen weapons or tunneling underneath to lay traps.